Hi, you're listening to Jürnes Talks, a podcast by the international architecture and design firm Jürn Studio. Hosted today by me, Lucy Pressel. In this episode, we're diving into inclusivity or lack thereof within the architecture field. We're sitting down with our colleagues Geku and Eyukova to discuss the women that inspire them, the role that gender plays within the discipline, and how inclusion and diversity have become more important as ever to design. Well, does the practice reflect this newfound focus on these topics? We'll find out. Geku and Eyukova, thank you so much for joining us today. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. Mm -hmm. And before we dive into the subject matter, um, would you uh, briefly share a little bit about your background, where you're from, uh, how long you've been working at UN Studio? Yeah, um, thank you, Lucy, for a great introduction. <laughs> Um, my name is Gaku. I'm originally from Kazakhstan, where I also was growing up and where I also got my bachelor's degree. And I moved to, to Europe recently in 2017, if that can be considered recently. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, to get my master's degree in architecture. Um, for career. So I started from Vienna and then in between I was living in uh, many more places such as Los Angeles or Rome in Italy. Um, and um, before I finally moved to Amsterdam to join Yoon Studio two years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, here in Yoon Studio I'm working as an architect with a team of Yoon Six, where I also met Yukova. Hi. Hey. <laughs> uh, just so my name is Eyukewe. Uh I was born and raised in France uh, from a Belgian mother and a Togolese father. <laughs> nice mix. Um, so I, uh, I studied in France. I did my master's in France, uh, also in architecture. Mm -hmm. But then I decided to move to Belgium when I got my, um, my diploma. And uh, I moved in 2012, I think. Uh, so yeah, a bit more than ten years uh, ten years ago, um, to work there, I did. Uh, I worked in different uh, um, practices, um, but um, my last six years, I worked for a uh, for an office um, more specialized in technical design and project management. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that's why I also moved to uh, Amsterdam, joining UNS uh, uh, Studio, UN Studio, sorry, for um, uh, to practice with you and uh, bring my knowledge in project management. Great. And now bringing your knowledge to this podcast episode. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> nice. You recently participated in one of our videos that we produced for International Women's Day, where you share the women that inspire you, the architects that inspire you, who are these? Let's go back to the video. Who are these and why did you chose them? Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> thank you for including us in the video and also for the podcast as well. Yes. And I'm really happy about the opportunity to like speak more in detail about them and how, um, how I find them influential to me. Um, I mentioned a lot of contemporary architects, not even contemporary, but uh, the ones that are alive now and the ones that are sharing our reality mm -hmm. of the industry of life of this world so i mentioned some examples of um, women that are shamelessly going through profession and mm -hmm. that uh, <laughs> that are not afraid to be themselves that are not afraid of exposure that are always responding really well to any opportunities that is out there and I really do think that it's um, a very big impact on modern girls and uh, other mm -hmm. people that um, that are facing similar difficulties because just like by the way they are by the way they practice everything um, we can see what's possible great and what about you uh, for me yeah I um I gave the name of uh, Denise Scott Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, it's someone that really uh, influences, uh, influenced me as an architect. Because um, I really like uh, the, the the theory that uh, uh, she developed with uh, with her husband, 
Robert Venturi. Um, the Duck Architecture. I re- just just the name. I love it. <laughs> um, and the theory is really is really simple. Um, it's the idea that um, a building needs a sign to announce what's inside its mm-hmm. function, or the building can be the sign for this function. Mm. Very simple but deep. Yeah. <laughs> um, and why duck architecture? Because there is in a, I think it's in the state of New York. Uh, there is this uh, this restaurant where they where they serve mainly duck, <laughs> and the building is just a duck, a Correct. white duck. That also probably was such a like a, a, such an influential step in American architecture in general because like their typology is also like a yeah. lot about like signage. And, yeah, um, that's the thing, you know. I mean, there is a lot of that. If you if you see like you know all those boxes, you know, like with I, I don't know Walmart, you know, and like this uh, this sign just uh, on it, McDonald's and yeah, everything. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's really like American. But they they wrote a book, Learning from Las Vegas, mm-hmm. where they studied the strip. The strip is just signage. It's just like sign, sign. All the buildings are just signs. Yeah. And they were just, that's what interested them. M- made me think of a Krusty Krabs example. <laughs> like the <Yeah>. big shell. <laughs> 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 like, there's only yeah. like one box and big shell. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's uh, that's part of the duck architecture. So yeah. and um, Influenced by the Niskot Brown. <laughs> yeah, influenced by the Niskot Brown. Definitely. So yeah, yes. that's, uh, and, and so the, the, I, I I mean yeah I did some work around uh, around this uh, this theory and um, still still today I really like to to think about um, form and function mm-hmm. sign and function in architecture I think it's a really interesting uh, really interesting thing. Nice. So I I see a direct link between the inspirations that you share and how it's actually reflected or manifested in your work as an architect. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Great. Definitely. And how's it for you, Goku? How do your inspirations that you just shared actually reflect in your work as an architect slash designer? Yeah, um, I think the examples that I shared, they are mostly about like my attitude and my workflow Mm -hmm. itself in general of like how to go through this regarding... um, Regarding prominent women that changed my architectural thinking, I have to mention anything. Um, she was working with Louis Kahn, but however, this there was again like the case of misrecognition where like her works were mm-hmm. recognized as works of Louis Kahn. Um, okay. And to me, this was a, a really big revelation because I learned about this only like two years ago, but I was a fan of Louis Kahn before. <laughs> and to me, that was a- <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, that's something that happens a lot. Like, Denise got brand as the same story. Yeah. So, Robert, Vent- Robert Venturi got a Prisker Prize in mm. 1991, um, but not her. <laughs> wow. And um, they were working yeah. together, right? Yeah, so they were working she, yeah. together. Yeah. The yeah. office, the office is called uh, Venturi, uh, Venturi, uh, Scott Brown mm-hmm. and as Associates or something. They were based in Philadelphia. Yeah. They were yeah. working for a really long time together, really long time. Um, and so, yeah, he got the Prisker Prize, um, but not her. At at that time, the Pritzker Prize said, "Yeah, but we only give prizes uh, uh, to a name, to one person. We don't give prizes to an office." Few years later, Herzog and Demeron oh. got the Prisker Prize, mm. and then you're like, hmm. mm. "Really? Really?" <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, t- but talking about misrecognition of women in the field, I recently uh, came across a quote or a statement that I would like to share with you guys. It's uh, from a architect historian slash theorist. Um, now I cannot find it. Ah, yeah. Beatrice Kolomina. And she says the following... Women are the ghosts of modern architecture, everywhere present, crucial, but strangely invisible. Is that something you can identify with? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, identify. (laughs) There was was fast response. (laughs) Can identify with, but I can definitely understand. And I would would more say like woman is a ghost of society. But yeah. Mm. Right. This is 100% true. Um, uh, Statistically and historically, we see that this statement is absolute truth. 
um, regarding like my personal experience, I, I, I like I cannot claim for for sure because I'm also like pretty much new to the industry. I don't have uh, decades long of experience, mm -hmm. but I'm already feeling, let's say, foreseeing my future problems of like misrecognition. So I'm really trying to address it like right now already, like really early on the point. And I'm trying to kind of put myself in a lot of uncomfortable situations that would actually in the end, let's mm -hmm. say, train my um train my habit to mm -hmm. have more exposure or train my habit just to simply take up the space mm -hmm. because it's like it's a lot uh because it takes a lot to re-educate yourself of like because like you were raised up as a like lady you have to be a, a girl you have to like be sit like this you cannot take <laughs> much space you, like <laughs> and all that so yeah. i'm really like working a lot on re-education and so on and so forth. But mostly, I'm of course, I'm trying to promote women first, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to to offer my help whenever I have the availability. For example, whenever we work on the project, I'm trying to offer my support firstly to women. Mm -hmm. So this is like, let's say, one of the approaches that I'm trying to implement. And um, another very important thing that I think might be crucial if we're all going to be doing this is to include uh, women in data. Whenever we're working on something, whenever we work on some project, we have to, we have to look not only for the standard standard, mm -hmm. but for... Mm -hmm. uh, Female standard. Yeah. So, yeah, mm. by small steps. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of things that I uh, recognize the f what you said about taking the space. It's really funny when you're, um, when you're in, in, in meetings and um, when you see men in a meeting from, I mean, from your company of the other side of the table. And when they want to address someone, most of the time they're going to address a man if there is a man mm. on the table first before wow. addressing a woman, but maybe the woman is the senior lead architect. I already, I already saw it in, uh, in, in different meetings, you know, like if, or even in Belgium. And that's, that's, that's really painful because you people are looking at you like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm just the assistant here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so wow. taking, taking yeah. space is something that is really important, I think. And I think yeah. the most important is also for men to give the space. Like being able to um, shut up at some point, mm -hmm. being able to listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so not only for the woman to step in, but yeah, also for the, for the men, of course, to step back. Right? Of course, yeah. it's it's way it's way too easy to ask women to always make the effort. Mm -hmm. You don't have you don't yeah. always have the the the, the energy yeah. to do to do so. So I mean, of yeah. course, men also need to yeah. be attentive and really look around and see their behavior and their behavior change when there is a man or a woman in the room. I totally agree to facilitate also uh, the woman coming in and, and, you know, having it easier and sharing and expressing herself. It's definitely uh, a role that, that a man has to take, I think. Totally definitely. Agree. I think we don't, we don't need to also go into the, the, the extreme in this, uh, in this idea. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, um, we don't need to protect the woman. The woman is not a. Vi uh, uh, we don't need to victimize. Yes. Women. Yes. I think women yeah. are really capable of taking their space yeah. and making their voice heard. But it doesn't mean that we, as men, also don't need to be uh, to 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 just like try to be mm -hmm. conscious. Yeah. So true. About yeah. our biases sometimes. Yeah. That's it's the only thing. Yeah. I mean, the only thing. That's one yeah. of the things. It's great that you're pointing this out. What are other challenges specifically tied to the workplace that you see women having in the field of architecture? Oh, with my, my, I mean, my experience, uh, I don't have a lot of it, but like still 10 years. <laughs> it's quite um, a lot. <laughs> um, I see how higher you go in hierarchy if we still follow hierarchy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a junior architect, um, then your architect, then you have a senior architect, associate director, who higher you go, mm -hmm. less female architect that you find. And that is something that you, that you find everywhere. It's not, it's not only in architecture. Mm -hmm. It's not only yeah. um, um, uh, in this office. It's just everywhere. It's, it's just, mm -hmm. it's like that. There is this kind of, 
I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why. I know why. I think there are a lot of uh, questions that we can answer today. Um, but that's that's something I, uh, yeah. I I saw definitely. Like if I if I remember during my studies, I think they were like fifty five percent of uh, of women, forty five percent of men. Mm -hmm. Then you finish the study, you're fifty fifty. Then you get a bit mm -hmm. higher and a bit higher and longer and everything, and then you, you and then you look at the the the, the founders of, uh, of of offices yeah. through the world and the renowned name that we have. It's not a fifty fifty. No, rule. no. Keep on working. Yes, aim for more. <laughs> <laughs> there is always room for improvements. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you say it. Yeah. And outside of the workplace, how does this gender bias? reflect in the construction of our city and urban spaces yeah that's mm. uh <laughs> 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 yeah okay let's go let's do this. Uh, i mean i think i think it's uh, it's it's really simple um go to a festival in the city here in in, in amsterdam for example mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna try to to choose an uh, an, an inclusive a more diverse festival inclusive not not yet but anyway Pride. Pride. Perfect you go to example. Pride. You want to go to Pride. You go there. You go outside. You have fun. You drink. And then you need to go to the toilet. You're a woman. <laughs> Good luck. Good infrastructure. Time. Just if you look around, you find you find infrastructure for and if and not only men and women, but for people that can stand mm -hmm. and people that can, can sit, you don't find them that easily. True. That's already a problem. Yeah. I mean, it's, yes, I like it it's sorry, it's just like so ubiquitous mm -hmm. that like the whole thing is just designed by men for men that we don't even notice this because we kind of perceive it as a standard. Like, okay, mm. this is like uh, just another statue, uh, which is a uh, man's urinal. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, because I mean, and, <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, but then there is also, I mean, next to that, I mean, of course there is that, but there are a lot of other examples. Um, look also infrastructure for sports and, and, mm. and everything. Most of the time it's like a basketball uh, field. It's like a football field. It's like a skate park. And don't get yeah. me wrong. I'm not saying it's just like for men, yeah. but it's, they are uh, uh, games. Mm -hmm that are perceived to be for men. Yeah. And they are the one yeah. that you find everywhere in the city as well. But Never thought about that. Yeah, of That's course. That's very true. Yeah. And then look at representation mm. also in our, uh, in our uh, cities, representation mm. in uh, monuments. Did you, do, you, do you know a, a monument or a, a statue or something from a woman here in, uh, in Amsterdam? I don't know. I'm just here for like a few months, but... Uh, I have to admit, I don't know a lot of statues in general. But most of now... the time, most of the time, maybe look around. There are busts of like a general or a thing or that yeah. name of of uh, of streets. Mm. Mm. Wow! Also, never thought about that. Just just take a look. Mm. There are there are studies as well. I think yeah. um, I know the one from uh, in Belgium, and I think in Antwerp there is like one street. It's changing, but that's also something to point out. Yeah, I actually live on the on the street that is named after a woman. Yeah, and I, there we go. <laughs> looked it up. Um, she 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 was uh, a wife of a prince. Uh, so. Oh, <laughs> so we put it there. So we put it yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like regarding cities, um, oops. <laughs> what I was also um, thinking is like it starts like so early from the age it starts from a uh, kids playground that like most of like uh, mm. activities to play they are not as attractive for girls as they are appearing attractive for boys in the young age yeah 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 and if you go from there like kids i mean playgrounds <laughs> in schools the design yeah. of schools they're yeah. also the same most of the time you have like the school you need to you need to have like a, a, a recreation area and there is a football field in the middle mm. and all the girls are expected to just stand around stand around <laughs> when when the, the the men are expected to 
take oh the space. God. I have flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's like I experienced that. <laughs> this is this is the first. Yeah, me too because I was not I was not playing football, <laughs> not so I was also on the side of it. And then we have like other questions that are also coming in. But yeah, so and then we are also <clears throat> teaching our kids how they should use public space. Mm. Yeah. Look at public spaces. There is there are, there are a lot of studies. Uh, if you go to a to a square, most of the time men are always standing in middle of the squares. They're standing in the middle of them. Wow. Women, yeah. when they use squares, they don't stop. They are just places to pass by, mm -hmm. and because they are most of the time not that secure for her, for them, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so they just like go around. Is it true? Not true? I mean, of course, there there are always variations and everything, mm -hmm. but. If you start to look at it, most of the time you really see, I mean, I think it's changing, but you really see also a group of men standing in the middle of the streets. Mm -hmm. Yes, they go in groups. Yeah, they go in groups. <laughs> <laughs> Light bulb. Yeah. No, I mean, they are, they are just, they are just uh, uh, kind of facts. And of course, you can always find uh, um, counterexamples. Yeah. You can yeah, always yeah. find counterexamples. Yeah. But I mean... But it's, it's very prominent. Yeah, and, like, it's very, prominent. It's, it's sticking out. Yeah. And talking about schools, I was wondering, do you think that this gender bias is already being taught or present in the educational system? Like when you've been uh, taught ar architecture or you were studying architecture, is that something that's already being taught there? Like implicitly, of course, mm -hmm, I don't want to mm -hmm. say like... Uh, you know, architecture is a man's work and we're teaching this, but like implicit biases, do you already see it in the educational system? Mm. <laughs> You're talking about university or like a preschool? University, I think. Like university, yeah. University. School, like yeah. specifically uh, when you're studying architecture. Yeah. Okay, like like they don't teach us to specifically design for men. Like don't think about women. No, like no, they just yeah, like yeah. say people. But yeah. like, but then whenever we kind of look up for the data of like, okay, so how much space people mm -hmm. need? They're like all the standards. They are for men. Yeah, uh, they are studied on men. Um, and then it reflects in the let's say everyday design designed for them. Mm -hmm. Like they specifically do not teach us to kind of oppress women but like the requirement starts from please accommodate men that's what i was in in yeah, a way referring to yeah. kind of like the stand the architectural yeah. standards like wow. i don't i don't have a background actually maybe i can mention that i don't have a background myself in architecture i'm from a psychology mm -hmm. neuroscience uh, side so i don't have a lot of knowledge about your field but that's what i'm curious about like do you see these standards are already being uh, more applied to men than women. I mean, look at one uh, one really big theory that we use as standard, the, the, the modular from um, Le Corbusier. Mm -hmm. That's something that everyone um, learns at school. That's, that's a, a standard. You you read the book, uh, you, you, you learn about the, uh, his uh, architecture, and the modular just saying, yeah, you have a standard. It's a, a white, middle-aged men mm -hmm. from one meter 83 that needs to sit at this height that needs to to uh, to stand this height mm -hmm. and you you just learn that but when when you when they teach you the le, le modular yeah they teach you the standard they don't tell you it's a white man <laughs> they it's don't just, mention that <laughs> no no they just mention it yeah, they, they yeah. just teach you the standard of architecture yeah. i mean yeah so that's yeah, the biases are there. The I mean, of biases, course, yeah. but I don't think that they are addressed, or at least when I was at, sc at school, mm -hmm. they were not addressed. They were not saying like, oh, you are to learn the modular. Yeah. Be careful. Mm. Yeah. It's a theory. So, it's interesting, yeah. but it's based on a, on, on a, on a bias. Yeah. Le Corbusier was... Yeah, the yeah, the Corbusier was a hell of a guy. <laughs> we're not going to talk about the story of the Corbusier. Yeah. Second, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. But for uh, next episode, <laughs> for next episode, <laughs> but um, no, definitely, and that's that's something. In I mean, the mm -hmm. the architecture sometimes it's really funny because um, we say that we that we want to design for everyone. Mm. that's the goal that we have i mean mm. that's i think that's yeah, every I the hope. goal of every architect <laughs> of course you want to design for everyone yeah 
are we? Mm. We have rules. We you we said about that. We have rules. There are rules. There are like if you do a city, um, you need to have like a minimum width on the on the on the um, trottoir. I don't know in English. Uh, <laughs> sidewalk. Uh, sidewalk. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Do you speak French? Was it French? No, it's French. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and yeah, most of the time, those minimal dimensions, minimal width, mm -hmm. they are even not uh, um, 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 uh, wide enough for two strollers to cross. Wow, that never crossed my mind. Oh. Yeah, that's the that's okay. the reality. Yeah. So there are those kind of stuff. So I mean, of course, we want to design for everyone, but then the question yeah. is. How can we design for everyone if we are not even conscious about mm. the biases that exist yeah. in the um, in the in, in in the laws that we are applying? Mm -hmm. Construction. I mean, yeah. If you do, uh, if you do, if you look at laws, you need to have like that many toilets for women, that many toilets yeah. for men. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we are in a society when we talk about genders. Yeah. How do we do that? Because yeah. you know you need to you need to to follow the law. Right. So yeah. that's also a problem. This building regulations. Building regulations. Building regulations yeah. starts there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like and the list of examples is absolutely endless. Um, okay. Like regarding like what Yuko was mentioning, uh, that it's not accommodating women. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's um, manifesting itself in architecture, in offices, mm -hmm. in toilets, in um, in cities, in public in transportation. Did you, you know, did you did you know that temperature, temperature. for uh, for MEP? <gasps> 24 degrees. Well, I for mean, women. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so for MEP, yes. for example, when you do when you do places as well, there is a minimum. There is a, a temperature that you need to achieve. It needs to be mm -hmm. like that much. If you do uh, uh, an office, it's mm -hmm. uh, I think 22 or 21. I mean, it's, I think 22. If yeah. you do like uh, living, it's 20. Whatever. There mm -hmm. are like minimum temperature that you need to respect. Yeah. And. You know, there is always this this kind of uh, um, um, fantasy that women are always cold. Is there? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everyone's just like, oh, yeah, because, yeah, and women are cold. complaining or women asking to close the window. Because it's cold. Of, or, or, oh, the office, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. cold. You need to, uh, to do the, uh, to, I mean, to put more temperature. Yeah. And the thing is, apparently, I mean, I'm not a specialist, but it's, it's just because the, the, um, uh, the, the temperature body is bit different mm -hmm. between men and women still i mean yeah okay. whatever <laughs> um and then yeah so then apparently they are like a bit higher i mean they are a bit uh, uh, higher or something so then the the the, temp the temperature that you have at the surface of your skin mm -hmm. um the the difference of temperature between air and your skin is kind yeah. of higher i don't know there is like kind of stuff yeah. so it means that you feel like it's colder yeah. but just because yeah. the, M the 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 MEPs are based on Men temperature, the standard. Yeah, wow. because men yeah. have a higher body temperature in general. Ah, like, it's like, men that like have higher, are, whatever. They have like, like that. Mm. some, like it has to do something with their basic temperature and also with the circulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's like biological facts already. But the truth is that the comfortable temperature for for women is actually 24 degrees, and for males is 21 degrees in the offices. And the standard is. What is it? You tell me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 21. 21 or 22 or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, even even not talking about that, it's just the fact that at some point, you know, you just try to put everyone in the same, uh, um, you know, you, you try to find a standard. Mm. But I mean, everyone is different. Yeah. Everyone is different, you know, just everyone, using a building yeah. is also different. If you are. Yeah. Very true. If you are from uh, another country, if you are. Um, of color if you are mm. um i mean um big i mean tall smaller mm -hmm. i mean we also talk a lot about uh, accessibility yeah i think uh, we don't talk we don't talk one. enough about accessibility in architecture as well if yeah. you want to just like broaden a bit the discussion mm -hmm. about biases yes. yeah that's also a big bias you see <laughs> yeah we just have standards but not everyone mm -hmm. is the same And also cultural differences, right? Um, of course, Just definitely. Crossing my mind. We don't use we don't use the mm. uh, the the building the same way. Definitely not. Yeah. Wow. And now, and don't get me wrong. I think this is really really great. We're being very 
critical about lack of inclusivity within the architecture field. And this is great because I think it just underlines that the issue is very prominent still and that there's a need and urgency that we have to address it, we have to bring it on the table, we have to do something about it. But let's shift more towards the positive side. What are developments or actions that you are seeing are being taken towards a more inclusivity in the field? You think women open in their own practices? Okay. With, uh, with let's say, new rules, with new methodologies, with new designs. Mm -hmm. So it's happening a little bit. Also, um, very slowly, we started opening the conversation about it. Like, we started talking about this more. We started giving women way more exposure. So this is going in good direction, but not fast enough. Mm -hmm. With the uh, with current um with current progress that we're making is going to take us about a hundred years to reach more or less the even numbers i i'm prepared i read the book uh, called women in leadership last night uh, <coughs> as preparation for yeah. the podcast no <laughs> not really i was i was just <laughs> casually reading this <laughs> <laughs> and um there, um, they calculated that it's going to reach a very even number, let's say, in Pritzker Prize laureates in women in politics and so on, only by the age of uh, 2111. So we go, we're going to have to wait like 100 years oh, yeah. if we're going to continue with like the space, with the pace that we are having right now. So to actually make a change and witness it, we need to act uh, very dramatically right mm -hmm. now already. Yeah. yeah. But there are definitely some uh, some points of improvement. Uh, this podcast, we're just talking about it. Good example. I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, we just need to start the conversations. I think yeah. people need to um, don't be afraid mm -hmm. to talk about th those kind of stuff. Um, I also discovered the last um, years that I'm also more working around those kind of uh, questions that um, um, people are way more open about it than we think. Mm -hmm. um, and that the first reaction, the first reaction you m mostly get from people is um, definitely yeah, being threatened or uh, they are like, yeah, if you, if you go to a, to a white guy and talking like, yeah, you're, you're, you're sexist and uh, there is a problem because you said this and that. And so first reaction is like, <gasps> Oh, it's being angry and, and yeah. everything like that. But anyway, it's an emotion, so it's nice because you need to start somewhere. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, people are people start to talk about that. Mm -hmm. There are not only um, about uh, women. There is also about the fact that we have a huge lack of people of color in uh, in the um, mm. in the profession. Mm -hmm. um, representation matters. So now we have a Prisca Prize uh, last year. Francis Kéré, okay. first, the first, uh, um, and I mean, it's it's really uh, painful to say it, but a freaking born architect mm -hmm. to get a Prisca Prize. Um, yeah. Then uh, there is a new RIBA director. So RIBA is the Royal Institute of British Architects. Okay. Uh, it's also a really young black man. Again, but then that's also the thing, you know, I was thinking like, yeah, if we try to find a uh, um, black woman architect, yeah, they are there, but not a lot. That's a huge problem. So, yeah. Right, Another discussion. Mm -hmm. um, there are also a lot of um, uh, um, practices that are putting inclusion really uh, in the center of their, um, of their uh, um, um, work. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are on in Belgium. I know one name in Belgium, Architecture qui des, uh, qui des genres. Uh, I know uh, here in um, in the Netherlands, Studio LA, uh, Arna Makik Machik. I hope I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm really sorry <laughs> about that. Yeah. But please go look into her work. It's fantastic. Okay. It's really really nice. Shout out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's not going that it's not going fast enough. I agree mm -hmm. with you. I also would like to be faster, yeah. Uh, but there are some steps in a good direction. Yeah. And I think the most important is keep on talking about it. Mm -hmm. Addressing it, bringing it on Addressing the, table. the problem, yeah. yeah. That's good. 
And I think um, what's for me very promising, I mean, me having studied psychology and neuroscience and mm -hmm. now working at UN Studio, I think this is a good statement also towards inclusivity in the field that we are starting or that architecture companies, not only UN Studio, but uh, around the world are being more and more interested in bringing interdisciplinary work into yeah. the field. I think that's a very great um, development and, you know, terms like, I don't know if you've heard about it, but neurodiversity yeah. are um, <clears throat> being brought on the table, which is really great because neurodiversity basically just um, addresses that on a brain level, we are functioning differently. There's yeah. a lot of diversity in the way that our brains work and, you know, it's a spectrum, like every one of us is somewhere else on the scale. And for example, if I link it to um, how we design spaces, you could think of high stimulation places, right? Where yeah. you have a lot of people there, where you have a lot of visual input, auditory input, lots of noise. I and agree. there's mm -hmm. some people being very quickly um, overwhelmed by that. Other people really embrace that and get their energy from it. Um, but just to make this point, I think it's great that we are starting to bring, for example, psychologists or neuroscientists into the field because um, I've been thinking about this. Maybe inclusivity is not even something that we have to push or force to create, but something that is automatically being created by the mere fact that a lot of diverse mindsets, people yeah. from different fields and bringing in different perspectives are starting to mingle and work together on projects to design spaces. And that will automatically bring in inclusivity. So I think that's a very promising um, development and I am expecting <clears throat> it to boom within the next years. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing a lot of interest there. So this is... Great Definitely, to, to but that's, that's a really, really good point. Um, there is this uh, this research in Sweden that happened about design for social innovation. Mm -hmm. Really interesting one uh, when they bring people from a lot of different fields that okay. normally don't work together um, to solve huge social problems. Stuff that you think mm. that um, if you re if you hear about that, you're like, oh, oh, in, oh, in hell, are we going to to solve that? Mm -hmm. And um, they did. Uh, four or five workshops they put a lot of people together for a week with one architect or a designer at the, the lead uh, as the lead from the workshop mm -hmm. and using the design mindset being able to bring problems and a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, ideas and and, and and stuff together mm -hmm. into one concept or one solution or different solutions uh, it was really promising great that's nice. that's that's yeah. definitely something that we need to do yeah. way more yeah. But we are, mm. we're already trying to do in that's I mean UNSX is the mm. team that is trying to do that in uh in, in UN studio right now, bringing a lot of different profiles, type of people together yeah. awesome. to think differently. Yeah. Yeah, Great. totally. Um it's actually really good that we have not only architects but like a lot more more talents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the Creative team. strategists, uh project designers. Yeah. Even I mean, even my profile. I think I don't think mm. that another team in the in the office would have <laughs> chosen me <laughs> as, as project manager. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not a designer anymore. So uh, yeah, of course, I think it's yeah. really nice. nice. Yeah, and yeah. we meet fantastic people. Also, oh, always yeah. the best. <laughs> That's nice. Nice. And it's nice too because because architecture is such a like traditional slow. Pacing, mm. slow paced industry. Yeah. And that it's nice that we're trying to push it a little bit more and make mm -hmm. it more lively, more alive yeah. from the workflow point of view. That, like, okay, we're going to bring in human experience, we're going to bring yeah. in um, user journeys, we're going to bring in mm -hmm. some data from tech, we're going to present it in the way that uh, people present it in, uh, I don't know, in Google Office. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Yeah. Like it's it's really nice to to experiment with things, mm -hmm. and this is a really something I'm really grateful for. That like uh, we have room to to play around, play with so, that. So, yeah. yeah, great. Gaku and Ayukwe, I would love to um, continue our discussion to infinity because I think there's so much to say. But I think we're heading towards the end of our episode, unfortunately. 
Are there any last thoughts that you have that you would like to throw out there where you're like, oh, I still need to share this? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, this discussion can go on forever, but mm -hmm. thank you for the opportunity to speak mm -hmm. about this and I'm um, yes. happy to be here. Um, this is very important. Um, regarding the last words, <laughs> like it's impossible to pick, but possibly to, um, to people to, to educate themselves on mm. their own biases, on... Mm -hmm. um, Like, what are they doing? How are they doing? How are they thinking and why? Where is it coming from? Yeah. And to to kind of think that whenever you think of a word human, mm -hmm. this is not always a white cis man. Yeah. It can be a woman. It can be a non-binary. It can be a person of color. It can be anything. So once we get rid of this predicament and this prejudice uh, yeah. in our, let's say, mindset, mm -hmm. things might start getting better. And of course, to spread the knowledge and to whenever you have the possibility to act, to act yeah. and to act radically, mm -hmm. um, dramatically, <laughs> <laughs> to not be afraid to take space. And yeah. Nice. Great, yeah. great take home message, Kaku. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I think, yeah, I think for me, that's uh, a bit the same to finish this one, just saying... Uh, to invite everyone mm -hmm. that is listening to just um, um, engage in the conversation, start yeah. the conversation and um, also to not be afraid to do mistakes because we mm -hmm. learn from mistakes mm -hmm. and diversity and inclusion is the same. You're going to make mistakes, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. You're just here to yeah. learn, to grow, to be better. Exactly. Great, guys. Thank you so much for joining our podcast today. I loved our uh, conversation. I think it's so necessary to talk about inclusivity. I think there's still uh, lots to, to improve, but we are heading towards the right direction. And hopefully within the next years, we're more and more heading towards a more inclusive world. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in today. We are planning on stepping up our podcast so you can expect more of these conversations within the near future. So follow, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.